Hello, everybody. As you probably already know, my name is Cheryl Hutto, and I am a, a support coach on a, mostly an emotional basis for care partners and caregivers. But I am really excited here today to have someone who can really talk to us about some practical uh, tips and ways to approach the caring journey. Uh, I'd like to welcome Mike George today, the founder uh, of a company that he and his wife have started called Soaring Families. Welcome, Mike. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Cheryl. It's great to be here. Uh, so why don't I just let you talk about uh, Soaring Families and then a little bit about your backstory. Um, it's a really um, tender story about your son, Ben, but go right ahead and fill us in a little bit, Mike. Sure. So <clears throat> my wife and I co-founded Soaring Families uh, about seven years ago. And what we wanted to do was help families navigate the, uh, the world of care. And the reason we wanted to do that is because we've been family caregivers ourselves for almost three decades now. Um, we have three adult children. One of them is Ben. He's our youngest. Um, and he was born with complex care needs, basically 24-hour care. And our, the, the amount of learning and the amount of struggle and the amount of, of uh, I guess, pain and suffering we've gone through, we wanted to turn that into something good. And what we realized a few years into the journey um, is that there really is uh, a positive side for caregiving, that it can be very fulfilling, even though, you know, the burden and the pain and the fear, they don't go away. There's a there's an equal and opposite uh, way of of having of, of going down that journey. So, we and one of the things that we realized um, part way through is that we couldn't do it on our own, nor should we do it on our own. And that's probably been the biggest enabler for us to get through three decades of twenty four hour care is to find a way to build a reliable network of of support around you and a and a trusted team of people um, that can help with and support you along the way, because you can't be there every minute of every day, um, and nor should you do that. It's something that is uh, not good for your health, not good for your your family member. Um, and what we've what we coach families on and show families is how do you bring the right person into your home to make all that work seamlessly so that it becomes an even better situation for everybody. Right. Oh, yes. It's so important. And I work so much with uh, a, a lot of an older population who have become care partners and caregivers for their um, spouses and mm -hmm. for their parents over time so that they finally end up unlike what happened when your son was born, like wow, here we are, we're doing it. It's something that has happened over time for a lot of the uh, clients that I work with. So it's difficult for them to realize that moment when they really might need help. It's true, yeah. Uh, and also because so many of their loved ones have dementia or have, uh, they've been together so long, they've done, you know, they're so set in their ways that like, you're not bringing anybody else in this house and I'm not sure, you know, an, unlike Ben, who had no say in the matter <laughs> when he as an infant, uh, that's one issue that's really tough. And I know that you run programs and uh, groups, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But what do you say to people when they're thinking like, well, I, I need the help, but what is that tipping point for a person? Well, I, I think it's different for everybody, depending on your situation. Uh, but one of the questions that I ask, not to scare people, but um, if something, if you were the only care person in, in the equation um, and if something happened to you, what's your backup plan? Um, and it's not to, you know, to make people feel guilty or bad about it, but you, in, in order for you to figure this out, um, at least for us, and, you know, one thing I'll add too is, is uh, my father lived to the age of 100. And for the last 14 years of his life, he lived on his own. So we were both caregivers for Ben, plus, you know, had his, tried to have his best interests at heart. So we, we kind of know similar situations for, for an aging parent. But it really comes down to, um, you know, 
what's the what type of experience what type of um you know how what situation do you want to create and if you're not at your best or if something did happen to you that that's not you won't have any chance of making that a good a good outcome um and so we try to work with families to to understand and look at it more sort of try to take the emotion out of it and put and just and paint a picture of what does that um if you can say dream come true scenario look like where um you know you're not the only one on the hook for it and that's where the discussion begins and each person is different like what they want to have come out of that is different um and you know you the as, as you know that what's very very common is that uh for an older person they want they don't want to lose their independence they don't want someone intruding on them um and it's it's something that you have to try to you know sort of look at a bigger picture and a and a and sort of a better outcome um and paint it that way and start to approach it that way and and you know very very often um it requires some outside care and that's where we can come in is to try to help the the family figure out what does that person look like or what does that care look like um for them and then start to integrate it to, so that it doesn't become um a burden and it doesn't become an intrusion in either you know anybody's life at home it actually makes it better right and i was just thinking as you're talking sometimes uh with an older person wanting to maintain independence and there is an element of dementia there that uh a, a gentle introduction and like creating a friendship you know with an older adult can um, instead of saying, here's your new, here's your new care person. I'm going to get my nails done. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, they're, they're, yeah, the transition is, is extremely important. Um, and often it, it only requires, you know, maybe a few hours, a couple of times a week to get sort of ramped up and see if the, you know, it, it, it does become, is the person you've hired, if you will, is that really the right person? Is it going to be a fit for everybody? Right. So there is a, um, I guess a probationary period, if you will, where you have to see, is this going to be the right thing? Is it going to work? Um, and there is a little, it's a little bit of a work in progress. Um, and it's, it's something that you just take one step at a time. Right. Absolutely. Uh, that's really important advice for everybody. And to know that nothing, there's nothing that can't be undone. Right. And uh, so that you can have someone need, into your home and say this didn't work right, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so definitely. one of the things well t tell us a little bit about uh what what programs you offer uh people on the journey so that you can sort of lift them up and point them in the right direction what is it that you really do mike tell us so we focus on home care in in the sense that we will 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 coach and support families to create the best home care experience that suits what they're looking for. Um, and as I say, every, every, everyone's situation is slightly different. And what, but, but, the, but sort of at the, at, the, at the most fundamental level, there are three pillars that we've discovered, that we've learned, that we put in practice for home care. Um, the first is finding the right person, the right caregiver. So how do you do that? How do you know the type of skills you need, the type of character they should, you know, and are they gonna be a fit? Um, you know, just because Sally is a registered nurse doesn't mean Sally's going to fit into my home, right? So there's there are many aspects you need to figure that out, and that's kind of the first step is really give it some, you know, the time it needs to understand what needs are you trying to fulfill. Is it simply home support? You know, is there just cooking meals, or is there medical needs involved? Like all of that, you need to be clear in your own mind of what that is. So we help families do that. The second piece is getting your home organized um, because there are things that, you know, the difference really for home care and bringing someone in is that your home or your family member's home becomes the caregiver's workplace. So you have to treat it that way. It's, it's a, there is a there is a boundary you don't want to cross because of that uh, and but the way you can make it work is you actually get yourself organized in your home um, you there are a couple of things that basic things you need to do 
Um, you need some sort of an employment agreement if someone's coming in. Basically, what this is how we're going to run things in this house, and these are the things you need to do. So everybody's clear on the expectations of that. Um, if there's care routines or if there's uh, medical things or nutrition requirements, you know, those need to be documented somewhere. You need to get organized around all of those. It can't just be in your head and, you know, a, a couple of slips of paper to give someone that that's not a recipe for success. Mm -hmm. um, and the other part of, of a home, if, if it makes sense, is that there are so many um, digital health apps out there to help you manage all that information. Um, and so to see, that's not the first thing you do, but there are things to make it easier, right? So that's kind of your, your organized home is you can figure out what's that framework look like. And then probably the most important one though is, so you've got the right person and you've got your home working really well is how do you create a, a respectful and nurturing relationship with the caregiver and your family member so that it all kind of works together. And that's really our expertise is showing families how to do that. We've yeah. Um, we've, my wife and I have many years experience in our, in, in our work life, um, managing teams of, of, you know, very diverse teams. And so we've, we've taken all that leadership skills and how to do that and build teams and put it into this program that we offer. And basically to show families, how do you do that? How do you make sure that the caregiver that you've hired is bringing their best every day and that it all kind of works well? Right. So that's what we focus on, those three pillars, and we show families how to make home care work. If you get those working right, um, what you will experience and it, what we have and many other families have, it, it really becomes almost a new freedom for you and a bit of a transformation that now you don't have to be on all the time, right? Um, there, your, your confidence grows a little bit, you become, have a little more energy for things, and that's really kind of the sweet spot if you can, you know, get down that road and get to there and then everything's uh, kind of flows from there. Wow, you're making some really good points. And I was, you know, going to be asking you like, what, what are some things to consider when you're thinking of hiring help? But I think you just covered it in the three pillars uh, very yeah. well. And I think that often people who are feeling overwhelmed are just, you know, grasping at straws and, thinking, well, I, I need help, I need help, but they don't ever consider those three pillars that you're making very clear uh, to get your home ready, to make sure that everybody's in agreement as to what's to be done and to maintain some kind of healthy boundary. And maybe that's another reason not to wait as long as some people wait because the healthy boundary is so difficult after a point when you're just feeling so beaten down. It That's is. Hard. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah, and you you often don't make the best decisions at that point either, right? Exactly. Right. Um, and it's you know you mentioned that we just we were kind of thrown into this world where other people sort of back into it a little bit. Right. Um, I guess what we have seen and the common and the common I guess outcome is that life has changed forever, regardless of whether you come at it gradually or whether it's just thrown at you. And the more you can prepare and get yourself organized, the better that journey is. Uh, a friend of mine mentioned to me the other day, he has young children and he says, I don't know how, I can't imagine how you would, could do that for such a long time being in care. We have a couple of young kids. Um, I don't know how you could do that without an, an outcome. And I said, well, that's not what it's about. It's about the journey. You take away the, you know, there, there, there are, you may not be able to change how this is going to evolve, right? And likely in, in the case of someone with Alzheimer's or dementia, there's, it, it'll evolve in a way where every kind of, who knows where it, it may not be the best for everybody, but you don't, you, you can't change that, but you can change the journey and how you, uh, the best you can make of it and how it can still be fulfilling. So that's what we try to help people look at. Um, and lo and behold, you can, you know, things, the, the outcome itself isn't as scary um, if you kind of approach it that way. Right, right. You know, I was just thinking and maybe even mentioned this at the beginning that we, we do sort of two different things, but in reality, I don't really think we do. It's, it's really about how are we both helping people care for themselves and get what they need. Exactly, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, wow, really great. Uh, 
Mike, I, I will definitely be posting, um, you know, comments when we put this uh, recording up for people to look. So your, your organization is called Soaring Families and you have had some programs where you get groups together and you're planning another one for early summer, right? That, that's right. So a few years ago, we created um, what we called the caregiver support formula, which shows families. It's an online training course, basically videos and workbooks and things and all the, all the tools you need to do it. And it centers around those three pillars I talked about. Um, and it's self-study, self-paced. Um, some families have, have taken it and, and been very active and proactive and gone through it. Uh, but what we found is that um, you know, all that content is really important and it can show you from, you know, from an end to end how to do it. But there are, I guess there are two obstacles for families. One is making that decision that I can't, I need to bring someone in. And so, but even if once you've done that, um, it's how do I find the time and the energy and I'm just doing it all on my own, all alone. Right. And it becomes, there's so many questions and, and you, you wind up not getting you know, the success that you could possibly get. So we've created a group coaching program we call actually the Champions Quest. And what we found is that we've, we've kind of turned people into or, or transformed to or help families shift from being fearing that they're alone and, and isolated um, and that they create this more confidence and feel like they could be the champion of their family's care. So we take the formula that we've developed with those three pillars and roll it into a group coaching program. So it's live calls like this, where we'll take them through step by step, that we can be their guide, we can answer their questions. And one of the biggest benefits really is interacting with other families in similar situations. Right. Some are further down the path than others. And all that knowledge is is, is shared um, in, in an open forum. And basically, we'll, it becomes, hopefully it becomes a mind shift for people that, yeah, I guess I can do this that they get that confidence and they don't feel like they're at their wit's end. Yeah, so we are offering this program. We went through it earlier in the year. We're offering it again in early June. Um, and it's a small group of, of families. It's, um, you know, no more than 20 families we put into it at once. Um, and we want that intimacy and we want that interaction with people. And it's, we just want to help as many families as possible and to you know get over that and feel and feel good about themselves excellent wow excellent program one last thing mike uh sure we're we're pretty short on you know, on a just a, a real economical level i mean you know there's no help out there I, where do you do you have tips uh if people weren't going to join your program and a, and a takeaway and they're like okay i'm convinced i'm i'm going to search around i can't do Mike's program, but I think I'll pick up the phone and start looking around. <laughs> Who do they call? Well, I, it, that's, yeah, I'm not sure how to answer that one other than, you know, depending on where you live is there's probably different agencies or different um, organizations that can help you. Um, the, I guess it, what it would start with is really um, start figuring out who, the type of person that you really want. Yes, right. Back to, back and to back right. to that, that's kind of the basic thing. If you're not clear on that, then you're not going to, it's not going to go well for you. Um, and it's, it would be something that, you know, you can, you can start that on your own. You can write down, um, you know, the types of, of, uh, of needs that you have. Maybe it's only companionship. Um, you know, a friend of mine had, had a friend come for their mother um, and she was her quote unquote smoking buddy. So when her mother would go out, you know, to have a, to have a smoke, she would be there with her. Right. And that's all she needed at that time in her life. So, you know, it's as simple as that, or maybe you need to go run some errands or take your, you know, your parent to an appointment or something, figure that out first. Um, and that can be your starting point. That can be the starting point into bringing someone in right. um, and not, overcomplicated it's it's rare that you you'll find the same person can do many things exactly. right um so just start with one and start with one what's the most um pressing need right now right, right. where do you need the most help i guess is probably the best question and then go from there yeah 
and there really is help out there. I mean, we really have to believe it. So there is, yes, and I mean, certainly with the pandemic, um, it has highlighted the lack of of available support, um, and it's actually hurt it. You know, people not being in that situation, and there's more families that want to stay in their home longer. So, you know, the 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 resources are less, but the demand is higher. So it's, uh, but nevertheless, it's, it doesn't change how you approach it, right? The right person is out there. You just have to believe it. You'll find them. If you figured out what you want um, and start asking for that, they will show up. I believe it. I believe it. Well, Mike, thank you so much. And again, everybody, this is Mike George with Soaring Families and, um, We'll post the information and how to be in touch with him. And and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>